Hi, Sarah. How Hi, are you? I'm good. Thank you, Louise. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good. So um, we're talking today um, about pregnancy and also postnatal rehab, um, getting back to full fitness, um, but also particularly within your community. Um, so I think generally for me, I'm thinking um, a lot of the friends and, and the daughters that I'm seeing are really lapping up pregnancy and all the information that's out there. They they're on the Instagrams. They're looking up so much because they are all very fast on their fingers, <laughs> faster than I am on my fingers. Um, and but they are seeing an awful lot. How much will be with regards to their posture and their breath and their pelvic floors? I'm not so sure, but they are. They are a community. They are. They are, and they do talk. Um, how how do you find it within your community? I think there's still work to be done. Um, I wouldn't say so so openly. Uh, look, you know, the, the help and guidance is not sought so openly, uh, especially with regards to those topics you just mentioned, posture, breath, um, anything like that it is. Um, well, actually, I, I don't even know that it's discussed at all, really, to be honest. It's just uh, you, you sort of get pregnant, carry the baby, not essentially seeing is it a time to maybe care for yourself a bit more. There's um, a lot of uh, self-care issues just pushed aside. You know, it, it, it's um, seen almost as selfish, maybe, to, to, to sort of put yourself uh, number one really and, and you first I have a lot of those discussions in my community with women but it's not mm -hmm. selfish that seems quite opposite with them um, yeah the they actually yeah. yeah I suppose like, that. I can be selfish this is the one time I can be yeah yeah no now that now that you've mentioned that yes thinking about it no not so much really no and, uh, and I always sort of quote that that self-care is not selfish um no because it can be quite often seen that way yeah yeah um and I, I would say that you know we my girls the daughters as well it's like they feel like this is where they can be um they can give that label selfish like you said wellness is um not selfishness at all because um no. that's number one priority for every individual isn't it yeah um, yeah rather than always looking after everybody else you can't look after anybody if you don't look after yourself that's it um, yeah but um yeah so where sort of like I'm, I'm hearing like you know yes this is the opportunity for me to just do it as I need to do it um and to gain the help that I need you you guys you're not really like no I think I think my community community could do with a bit of that empowerment amongst the the mm -hmm. um the pregnant postnatal you know a sort of age of women or group of women who are in that situation they could do with a bit of that attitude to be honest <laughs> but you can't reach every single woman can you no unfortunately that's the that's the thing you can't reach everyone so i think it's to, you know trying to sort of help change the dialogue change the narrative a little bit that um you know, looking after ourselves, looking after our body, me mental health as well, emotional health. You know, when you're when you're pregnant and uh, postnatally, you can have so many fluctuations in how you feel. It can really like it can knock your confidence. You know, you, your hormones are doing all sorts of strange things. Your body's changing. You you can almost feel a loss of identity. That can happen a little bit if you're not aware of it. Um, and if you don't really have that kind of feeling in yourself to seek out a support system or a support network, I think it can become very isolating, very yeah, isolating. Possibly, because, you know, you said um, you can like kind of lose your own identity. Mm. That can be when you're lapping up everything around you. Yeah. To give you information because it's sort of like, oh, so hold on, I feel like this. My boobs are feeling like that, or yeah. like that. I've got those stretch marks, or I'm in pain. My pelvis is hurting, or whatever it might be. Suddenly, you, you're, you know, things change on your body without, possibly, you know, even from like, you know, an, an athlete suddenly going, okay, I've got full control usually, but right now, I've got, I haven't got any control on how 
I'm participating in my sport or how my arms are changing or yeah 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 okay yeah I think I think I think you know that that can be quite huge I mean when I had my youngest so she's 40 now you know um, I wasn't in this field at all in wellness at all um I did try and look after myself as much as I could but I had um pregnancy depression I can't remember what it was called and, and nobody even really talked about it it was actually my chiropractor who said to me she said you're in depression right now she said it is a thing I said but you know I'm pregnant and I haven't had the baby she said no but you are you are she said I can I can see from what you're saying to me and and um I thought she actually told me to go and see the homeopath that we both did see we had a homeopath in in um, common and um, I saw the homeopath and it did help somewhat but had she not said that I think I would have just carried on as I was because that that's how I felt and you know when you feel so so down you yeah. can't really pull yourself out of it um, and I did there was not really that kind of discussion or support it was just you're pregnant you feel rough and that's that's it really yeah yeah, yeah. so and although maybe recognised postnatal depression can come on, uh, exactly the point, you know, depression can happen at any time. Yeah. And yeah, yeah actually, many of us wouldn't recognise when linking that to maybe the pregnancy or linking the fact that you have got depression during pregnancy. Yeah. And, um, and resources that you can pull upon to help you. That, that's, yeah. So I think it's about, you know, creating more of a, more of a support network, more of a dialogue um, that, you you know, you you are in a, a different stage of life. You're going to be feeling different things mentally, emotionally, physically. Your body is doing different things. Um, and then you become more aware of if something is quite not quite right and when you need to seek help yeah but I think it all it, it it all stems from just having dialogue and education and not being too embarrassed to discuss things not to hide issues so so within your community if someone is if a lady is pregnant um I, it's obviously going to be celebrated um but is it like not really talked about throughout the pregnancy much apart from the practical things it, it, it is um it's becoming more talked about it was there was a tendency to keep it quite secretive um to try and hide the bump as much as possible which I, I never could quite understand and still don't really but they you know they, and they, they become very, can, can become very difficult with a large bump you know trying to hide it um now not so much I think that the younger generations and social media they're quite quite um proud with their bumps and you know um, how it looks and that kind of thing but they're, they're still very selective I suppose there's still huge parts of the community that I think would just be a bit more reserved yeah, yeah. I mean I mean and that's fine I think to, you know it's fine if they want to be reserved to some level but not if it would affect any health issues or any support issues I don't think it needs to go that far mm. Do you find that the women talk to each other about their pregnancies? Um, yes, I think I think they would talk about their pregnancies, but not necessarily about any issues or health issues or how they're feeling body wise or pain or, you know, if something wasn't quite right. I don't know if they would naturally just discuss it with the with this with anybody around them so that it would be a support network and then that you would know that something's not right and to seek further help I'm not sure that would necessarily happen okay. you know a lot I think there's still still somewhat of a um, taboo a quietness around it you know so like you said it's loud and proud in sort of the wider community in the British community and I think you know we need to get there a little bit essentially more just for just for health reasons really just just for wellness reasons support reasons you know for women to be totally supported in in that part of their life yeah. um i love your instagram because it just covers so much information in women's health women's wellness yeah um, we've mentioned before we've done 
talked some with regards to um, menstruation and also pelvic floors. Um, and here we are talking of pregnancy. Um, and I think it's really worth checking out Sarah's Instagram because um, then you've got a source of information and it is, it's exciting stuff. There's happy stuff on there with, um, yeah. with movement. And, and um, then and they're, they're connecting the pelvic floor back, you know, the yeah. pelvic floor is, um, it should be addressed from a very young age, I feel, anyway. Teenagers, girls from school, they should be to which, you know, I think there's more of a promotion now through the NICE guidelines to try and kind of get that implemented, and I know it will take time. But especially then going towards pregnancy and the, the effect pregnancy and birth can have on your pelvic floor, that if there is damage or if there is stress on the pelvic floor that it, it doesn't mean that's it that that's lifelong just because you've had a baby you know you you still seek help and you still find ways to to um address that and to fix yeah. it because it's probably you know, it's between pregnancies don't you yes because, um multiple pregnancies you know can have um it can affect the pelvic floor. Yeah. Um, and so more pregnancies. So I've, I, I, we, you and I have both had a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, we've had the same um, pregnancy. So we've both had four. I had twins on the um, last one. And oh, wow. absolutely, it's um, it has it has an impact on the pelvic floor. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So within communities where you know you and I have had you know a few children between us and that's that's just two women um mm. so where there's multiple births we, again we need that extra care and education goes back to yeah that. and it, it is educate it's the extra care it's the education that um you need to look after your body like really be you know the look after looking after the body the exercise the breath work we've talked about before the posture all really simple things that can just make your body feel so much better and then essentially you feel so much better yeah because pregnancy stance can bring on backache it can yeah. um, change your breathing habits sometimes and just after you've had the baby doesn't mean it suddenly changes back to how you were previously not we're not talking of body aesthetics, we're talking of body alignments yeah. for things, areas such as the back or the pelvis. Um, if um, there's pelvic girdle pain, if there's the lower back pain, because post birth, we're still feeding the baby, be it bottle or breastfeeding, the, those stances don't change. Um, if we're standing up and we're holding the baby, we'll kind of go back into that support mode of leaning back where um, then we're putting stresses on the body. And yeah. So we yeah. need those exercises for rehab to then get us fit and strong throughout the whole of the body. Um, and then there's, um, again, the scars, you know, so um, yeah. if it's um, tearing vaginally or if it's a C-section abdominal birth, um, how to actually support those scars so that they can, again, have their length um, so that it doesn't compound a problem later on elsewhere in the body yeah I think yeah go, going on from that I think women really need the encouragement they need to be encouraged and educated to to do all those things to look after themselves to exercise to move um, to incorporate breath work to think about their posture because I I feel there's a little bit of a tendency to think uh, once they're sort of pregnant and had one baby, maybe then had subsequent pregnancies, it's almost like a oh well, that's me done attitude. I, I, I you know oh, I'm, I'm busy with the kids and I'm a mum and I can't look after myself now. And I will approach that somewhere in the future if I do. That 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 I have that is a huge thing for me that I see in our community. The the, the self care, the the health. You're running around. We know how much we run around our family. For goodness yeah. sake, if we're not well, we can't do that. Yeah. Or it's very detrimental to us because then we're in more pain or we're tired. Yeah. We're, you know, so the, the looking after the body and um, the movement, that it, it needs to, you know, it needs to be daily, weekly, and um, all, all sort of caring for others aside, that you can make some time for that. You know, I was chatting to somebody very very young lady actually 
and it surprised me because when she, she she mentioned to me about my Instagram and she said oh oh I've, I've got the kids now I've, I've got two and I'll just wait till till they're a bit older and then I'll start to think about something so essentially what she was saying to me that she wasn't going to do any exercise or any any care of her own body because she was now a mum and you know with all the best will in the world that, that's not it's not really going to work you're just going to feel and well, you're going to get to a point then I think people maybe a lot of the older ladies in our community just give just give up then they just they just don't ever get there then yeah yeah it's always tomorrow or it's it's yeah. relevant anymore um yeah. but we are relevant yeah uh, we are we are the um we are what's the word I mean like the hub of the family. Yes, you, you, that's it. The heart of the home. <laughs> yeah, the heart of the home, and you want to be, you want to be there and energetic and healthy for as long as possible. Um, and and be just, happy. Be happy. We're, if we're in pain, we're not happy. No. And and you know, if you feel comfortable in your own body, and you feel happy in your own body, then you're going to be so much more happier in in all other aspects of your life really and I don't just mean aesthetically by no. not by any means I just mean comfortable you know happy strong I always used to say this when I first started in this in this field I said I don't want my client I'm, I'm not really all about the lose weight that's not what I promote on my page I'm very happy for anybody who wants to lose weight and I will support any client who comes with me to, with that goal in mind but I want to help women so essentially that when they are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, they can still squat and sit on the toilet, that they are not having issues with that. You know, yeah. we squat, we exercise, so we can sit on the toilet and squat and 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 in be in be comfortable in that when we're really, you know, getting into our older years. Mm -hmm. And we can only achieve that with our knees and all sorts of things and our hip health if we look after those parts of our body as we get go through each stage so it's not just in it it's not just for the right now it's the investment for the future. A long term investment isn't it in our bodies it's an investment you can't have you you're not going to have a car for 60 70 years and not service it and not look after it are you <laughs> no, no absolutely I, I i remember saying this many times you know my car gets serviced and mot every year we we need to do the same. For we us. need to do the same. We need yeah. our, our own nuts and bolts checked. Yeah. With a pelvic floor health physio, if it's going to the GP, if it's seeing yeah. a wellness coach, if it's um, a fitness instructor, PT, um, who knows their subject, who understands women's yeah. bodies and how they work. Um, and there, there are many resources, you know. Yes, again, we we've said social media. Um, yes, adore your pelvic floor. Yes, you know the women's and men's public health physios there those resources are there um and the nhs on the on on google you know they they do have advice yeah um, it, it's sourcing it and um finding the right source for you mm -hmm. to um feel good and for the best optimal level of um energy yeah, yeah. of energy of feeling of, energy. of living life isn't it who wants to just get by we want to live life we don't want to just get by every day no absolutely so within your community where are your ladies most likely to find resources is it through their gp is it through social media is there other organizations that are going to be really keying in I think uh, hugely now social media has a huge impact because it, everyone's got a phone, everyone's on social media, on Instagram or Facebook. So it's a way that they can access the information. You know, yeah. that's a huge way. Obviously, the, the health service is under so much pressure now. You know, they, there's so many issues with um, the funding and that that can be quite difficult. So I think accessing it um, in a trustworthy fashion, you know, looking for yeah, for, yeah. for um, persons you can trust or um, societies you can trust anything that kind of that thing that kind of thing is a good way to access it yeah. um, I think um, also um, natal health check that that's really important yeah. so there are GPs that are, are, are offering a great postnatal health check um, 
I personally feel, I don't know about you, Sarah, but it's nice if possible, and I know this doesn't always happen, to have a separate check to when the baby has their eight-week check. Yeah. Uh, but um, also um, ask the questions that you need to ask at your postnatal check. If there isn't a postnatal check available or if you need um, a pelvic floor health review and a diastasis or abdominal review or scar review, again, the women's health physios are really good. Yeah. Um, they, they range from between 75 to 90-ish for a postnatal check. And if you are looking at having more children, then you want to be in the best position possible for the next pregnancy and the next delivery. Don't yeah, you? definitely. I think it's a really good investment to make in yourself after you've had a baby to have a really good check, see where your pelvic floor is. And then, you know, you don't necessarily need to keep seeing the physio. Then you can you can approach someone like ourselves, a coach um, who's had training in being able to help you to restore your pelvic floor, you know, and, and move forward that way, not just leave the issues to just worsen over time and with regards to fitness finding somebody that is is well qualified in women's health yeah. or postnatal um, yeah definitely yeah you know as, as as brilliant as social media is everyone thinks they're a master at anything that they want to come on and do and and you can i see some questionable things on social media with regards to you know exercise and moving your body and just make sure that who you are following and what you are watching is is going to be the best thing for your body really yeah if it feels good that's a good indicator but it's yeah. building the strength from the inside out yeah that's it yeah it, yeah. it is literally that um, i i had a client only the other day and um that they're an athlete and it was like, you know, big moves. I want the big moves. I want to be able to get back. I feel good. I feel good. And it's like, let's do some testing now first. And we, we the um, postnatal um, guidance um, for going back to running um, by Absolute Physio, Granier, O'Donnelly and Tom Goon, they are a great resource. So that's a really good um, resource to look for we have that on um, our website at Joy Public Floor but you can go to Absolute Physio you can go to Grinning, um, Grane O'Donnelly and, and see where to access it or google it it'll come up yeah um, so um, yes yeah, so we were doing some strength testing and, and uh, you know we didn't go for the low testing we we're just beginning with strength and it's those little muscles it's the little muscles that need to awaken and get strong don't they so that again it's from the inside out not just pelvic floors it's everything from um, again um, just even going for calf raises how, how yeah. are you? you know how are you on this side how balanced are we here um so again we're, we're kind of getting quite deep here you know uh, uh, some people might think oh goodness me you, you're really getting you know this isn't for everybody well again all we're saying is just remember it's not it's not just the big muscles it's the little muscles as well yeah it's it's the, 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 especially when it comes to the posture side of things the little muscles you know that that we that in Pilates, I always find the the funniest thing is when you've got new clients that the movement seems so small to them, they can't understand how that they can be working or it's, oh, it's not, you know, or oh, this is not a lot, you know, it's not, they're not completely exhausted at that time. And it's because you need, as you said, you need to start from the bottom up, from the inside out, and then, you know, you work it up. It's no point exactly you need the strong foundations it's just like building a house you need strong foundations and then the outer shell can, yeah. can be good so you just have to and, the, and the, the last thing I'd probably like to say is that to make sure that you just take your time once yeah. you've had a baby and once you you know we don't if you are actually looking after yourself and thinking you're going to go into exercise and more, just to take your time, start inside out, bottom up and let your body recover, recuperate, get stronger. You know, don't try and be doing sort of hit sessions when you're five, six weeks postnatal, that kind of thing, which I know that can be quite common nowadays. OK, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you on that one. <laughs> because it can create better problems for future pregnancies. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So yeah. It's very, very, uh, and I'm very hot on that myself, like you say, because um, that we, we want to be fit for the future. Yeah. It's not just that moment of a buzz, because that's all it will be if yeah. you're doing that, is that, that moment of like, 
done it. <laughs> yeah. so the moment of a buzz gets strong from inside out, um, yeah. all over for future wellness and happiness because um, that's been strong. That's and, it, isn't it? Yeah, that's everything. Oh, that's lovely, darling. Well, I'm looking forward to um, catching up with you on our next subject. Um, I'm actually looking here. We are going to be talking about perimenopause and menopause. Oh, wow, <laughs> the, big, the big guns. <laughs> They're all big guns, aren't they? These yeah. are subjects we can talk for hours. Oh, hours. gosh, yes. <laughs> okay, my gorgeous. Well, um, lots of love and I'll see you next time. Thank okay, you. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye, darling.